Last time, we looked at three short excerpts from a typical Richard Dawkins attack against God and promotion of evolution, which he gave at Idea City 07. This time, I want to examine his statement about the evolutionist's right to accept ludicrous improbabilities. Let's listen again to what he said. There are a billion, billion galaxies and a plausible number of planets. Think of the implications of that. The fact that there are so many planets in the universe, so many, more, more generally, so many opportunities for life to have originated, entitles us, if we need it, to postulate a theory of the origin of life which is just vanishingly, ludicrously improbable. He tells us that the evolutionist is entitled to accept ludicrous improbability because of the vast number of opportunities for life to evolve. In the field of origin of life, probably no scientist has been held in greater esteem than Professor Harold Morowitz. Morowitz added up the energy content of all the chemical bonds in a simple bacterium. He compared this to the energy content at equilibrium of the atoms from which that bacterium was formed. He calculated the probability of this bacterium coming into existence to be 10 to the power minus 100,000 million. To write that as a decimal point followed by 100,000 million zeros in the final one, if you could write 10 zeros every second, it would take a little over 3,170 years writing every day for 24 hours a day. We can see why the notation 10 to a power is very helpful. Now, one chance in 10 to the 100,000 million is about the same as the chance of buying one lottery ticket every week and winning each time for 274 million years. We can see why Dawkins spoke of ludicrous improbability. Dawkins is a biologist. No biologist can do any worthwhile research without a pretty good understanding of probability. One of the steps in probability analysis is to estimate the limits involved in the problem. So, if Dawkins were honestly assessing the opportunities he talks about, he would look at how much time is available for evolution, how quickly can evolution happen, and at how many places could evolution have happened. The cosmologists of the world tell us that the universe is 15,000 million years old. I think they're mistaken, and I'll be looking at my reasons in a future episode, but for the moment, let's assume they're right. If you multiply by 365 to get the number of days, and multiply by 24 to get the number of hours, by 60 to get the number of minutes, and another 60 to get the number of seconds, you get 4.73 times 10 to the 17 seconds since the origin of the universe. If an evolutionary step could happen 200 times every second for all that time, then there could have been 10 to the power 20 evolutionary steps in all the time since the Big Bang. The cosmologists also tell us there are about 10 to the power 80 atoms in the universe. Since Dawkins loves to speculate about evolution happening in millions of other mythical universes, let's say there could be a hundred million, million, million times as many atoms, just to be on the safe side. That would give a maximum of 10 to the power 100 atoms in all of Dawkins' many billions of universes. So, with 200 evolutionary steps every second, for all the time since the Big Bang, at every place where there's one atom of matter, in every one of Dawkins's cherished universes, how many steps could there have been all together? 10 to the power 20 times 10 to the power 100, which equals 10 to the power 120. So, how much improbability must be faced at every single one of those steps? 
10 to the 100,000 million divided by 10 to the 120, which equals 10 to the power 9999999880, which is the improbability of buying one ticket for the lottery and winning every week for 274 million years, but 17 weeks less than before taking Dawkins's millions of millions of millions of imaginary universes into account. So we might ask, what gives Dawkins the right to claim that the evolutionist is entitled to expect us to take such utterly ludicrous improbability as anything other than a joke? His only reason is his determination not to accept what Anthony flew S. H. Lipton, Fred Hoyle, Chandra Wickrama Singer, and many other eminent scholars have accepted, even though they didn't want to. That bacterium could not have happened by chance. It had to be created by an intelligent designer. The Bible says in Psalm 14, verse 1, The fool has said in his heart there is no God. I don't like to call other people fools. After all, I've done many foolish things in my life. But I think it would be reasonable to say that anyone who's prepared to base his life and his eternity on odds as utterly ludicrous as this might just qualify. You'll remember from the last episode that Dawkins poured scorn on Hoyle for his assessment of evolution. Hoyle was looking at an absolutely fundamental problem for evolution. Dawkins claimed he had totally misunderstood what evolution is all about. Let's see if Dawkins was right about that next time. Thank you for joining me for this episode. If you enjoyed it, please like, subscribe and press the bell so that you'll be notified as I release new movies. If you'd like to support this project, you're welcome to do so through Patreon. Find a link on my channel banner and in the description below.